it's not your typical walk in a park. On this hike, there is no trail. Just lots of branches and briars and slow going for biologists trying to make their way through the dense forest around the Savage Gulf. This is particularly a difficult one. A lot of people think botanists are just out hiking the trails, but in this case, it was a lot of beating through the bushes and brush. They have come to South Cumberland State Park in pursuit of a wild flower you might not expect to find in Tennessee, the orchid. Most people don't realize we have approximately 50 native orchid species to Tennessee. The orchid family has more species than any other plant family worldwide, but not here in North America. Most people, when they think of orchids, they think of the tropics and those species that grow on trees. They're epiphytic orchids. Ours are all terrestrial. This is one of our common orchid species, the rattlesnake plantain. It, um, it is an orchid, flowers this time of year. It is one of our native orchids. And we have two species in this genus, uh, one of which is state listed, but this one is not rare. It's a fairly common orchid we see. But the object of today's expedition is much harder to find. What we're looking for is the white fringeless orchid, sometimes called the monkey face orchid. Uh, Platanthera integralabia is the scientific name. They grow in what's called a Cumberland forested acid seed, wet, boggy areas with a more open forest canopy to let sunlight in, an abundance of sphagnum moss, cardinal flower, and a wide variety of ferns. There's three plants right here. The white fringes orchid grows to about a half to three quarters of a meter in height. It's got very showy white flowers. Flowers that are so rare, only a few people will ever see them growing in the wild. There are botanists all over North America, let alone the world, who've never even seen this plant, and we have it right here on some of our state park lands. There's only one population in South Carolina one in northeast Mississippi, just a few in Alabama and Georgia, and a few in Kentucky. So range-wide, it is a rare species. We have the most in Tennessee, but even with that, it's still rare. The white fringeless orchid is already considered endangered by the state of Tennessee. Now work is being done to see if it should be added to the federal endangered species list, which is why they are being searched out and counted. It's very dense, it's hard to see just the leaves of the orchid plants. So what we're really looking for are the flowering plants. Because only a small portion of the plants will flower, it's important to count them over several years. For some reason, several of the occurrences this year have had higher numbers of flowering plants that have been seen in the past. So this has been a good year to get a data set to compare against status surveys that have been done in the early 90s and in 1980. We found a good number of flowers here today at Savage Gulf. It's a significant population. But about 70 miles southeast of here, in the Cherokee National Forest, is the largest known population of white fringeless orchids. There's several different Platanthera species that bloom in here. There is another white one, but the flower is much smaller. It's Mark it's Pistrang, a forest botanist and ecologist okay. with the Cherokee it's National Forest, keeps an eye on the orchids here. We annually monitor this population, just looking to see trend. Are we on the increase, are we on the decrease, are we stable? This count is more complex. We go back and we start together, especially on these ones that are only 10 meters apart. Divided into sections, a measuring tape is run down the center of each one. Non-flowering plants that touch the tape are counted, as well as flowering plants on either side. It's amazing, for as many as you see blooming, there's two, three, four times as many of these vegetative plants you see out here. Our flowering data has gone everything from less than 100 to over 1,000 on any given year. And if you saw that much variability, you'd panic and think, oh my gosh, the population just crashed. Monitoring that vegetative index as well gives us a better idea of plants just occurring but not necessarily blooming. While this population of flowers is stable, Things like timber harvesting, construction, ATV use, and rooting by feral hogs have contributed to a decline in their overall range. But the greatest threat to their survival is the loss of forested wetlands where they thrive, complex ecosystems that are easily compromised. If you were to 
put a road in right to the edge or open up the canopy, you can introduce invasive plant species, you can introduce more access from humans, more access from the other animals, any number of those things. Change the hydrology. These are the places where good water quality starts and where good water supply can be maintained. Without these types of places on the landscape, the water that falls quickly is lost to downstream areas and becomes more likely to be polluted and less available for us to utilize as well as to support healthy ecosystems. With over half of all white fringeless orchids being found in Tennessee, the work being done here is critical to the flower survival. We feel like those sites could be pretty vulnerable to environmental changes or to changes in the habitat that result just from human activities. And so Tennessee is really a vital part of the conservation picture for white fringes orchid. It would be a shame if we lose this or other species on our watch. By protecting these streamhead areas with all sorts of other plant species, invertebrates, and wildlife, it's protecting the whole ecosystem and in turn, protecting us from the harsh reality of a world where this rare flower no longer exists. I think it's a loss for us, it's a loss for our children, our grandchildren, for whom the opportunity wouldn't be there to see a species that is just as remarkable as the white fringes orchid is. I'm Ken Tucker on The Wild Side.